welcome to ATCM, the emergency medicine channel. Today as part of ECG learning, we are going to discuss about bundle branch blocks, especially left bundle branch block. You know that there are two types of bundle branch block, left bundle branch block and right bundle branch block. Right bundle branch block is most of the time it's an innocent problem, very rarely it can be uh, associated with uh, major complication, but whereas left bundle branch block is always pathological. It can be an acute problem, it can be a chronic problem, but it is always a pathological problem. In left bundle branch block, activation of left ventricle of the heart is delayed. There is a problem in the conduction here, so that is slightly delayed. You can see here conduction occurs like this, but due to some reason it is slightly delayed, whereas the right is going very fast. With that fastness, left ventricle uh, activation is not occurring. So the left ventricle slightly, uh, the contraction also may be slightly delayed. So the electrical activity also may be slightly delayed in the ECG. Whenever there is a bundle branch block, the QR, the, the normally SNO2 AV node conduction happens, then AV node to bundle conduction happens like this. This is uh, P wave. This is the QRS complex. Okay. So whenever there is a conduction defect happens, what happens is P to PR interval is normal. Then the conduction of the ventricle will be slightly delayed. Okay. So that is a problem. So whether it is RBBB or LBBB, the conduction will be delayed. So the QRS complex is wider than uh, 120 milliseconds. That is more than three small squares. There is a dominant S waves in V1. So S wave is very dominant. You can see here. Then there is M pattern in V5, V6. Most of the time it is M pattern only. M is like this. Okay. Sometimes you can get W also. So most of the time it is M pattern upright or positive. Wave. Sometimes it can be negative also. Absence of Q waves in the lateral leads. So that is also a feature. You cannot see any. Uh, Q wave here normally small Q has will be there that is not there. Discordance of the SG segment that is a very classical sign because this will uh, uh, this will be the major predictive uh, change in acute myocardial infarction. Discordance means if you are having a M pattern in the LBBB the QRS is upright, SG segment in T wave will be down or negative. Whereas if you getting an W pattern in the QRS complex, the ST segment will be upwards. So this is called as discordance. So if it is positive, QRS is positive, ST segment will be negative. So that discordance pattern is a very classical finding in normal LBV, but in myocardial infarction and all that will be concordant that we will see afterwards. Poor R wave progression in the chest leads that is V1 to V6 the R wave progression is very very minimal. Left axis deviation so if you take lead uh, 1 and AVF or lead 2 lead 1 will be positive QRS will be positive AVF will be negative okay. So this is left axis deviation that is the easiest thing you can make out from ECG. The LBBB is always pathological and a new onset of LBBB is equivalent to myocardial infarction. So what you are seeing here is a LBBB pattern, V1 it is a prominent S wave that is a RS pattern and V5, V6 it is a prominent positive wave that is a M pattern. Sometimes you can see the W pattern also that you will see afterwards. Now LBBB in AVL and V6 wide M shaped notched monophasic QRS complex you can see here. So M there is a notch here sometimes only notch will be there sometimes it will be wide notch. <coughs> and sometimes it will be uh, negative the V5, V6 will be negative that is a W pattern okay. But uh, look at the ST segment it is upright here look at the M pattern. ST segment is down slope. So this is called as discordance. The QRS complex will be positive, ST segment will be negative. Whereas in the other pattern, W pattern, Q 
QRS complex is negative, ST segment is positive. So, they are called as discordance. So, discordance is a classical finding you get in LBBV, whether it is positive QRS or negative QRS, ST segment will be just opposite of that. But whereas in myocardial infarction, what is happening or ischemic heart disease, it is concordance. So, what you are seeing here, M pattern QRS complex with ST segment upwards. Normally, we expect a pattern like this, but here both are positive. This is called as concordance. That is a classical finding you see in ischemic heart disease, especially in myocardial infarction. So, here you are seeing a discordant pattern. Here you are not seeing a discordant pattern on moreover the T wave is slightly upright. Now, LBBV with the discordance T segment it is normal. Uh, if it is M pattern it is uh, uh, ST segment will be negative. If it is W pattern ST segment will be positive. This is called as discordant. Why I am telling I am, I am spending 2, 3 times in this same uh, problem is this is the one of the most important finding in LBVB. If you are seeing a concordance, sure it is myocardial infarction, okay. LBVB is always pathological. So, a new, new onset of LBVB is always equivalent to myocardial infarction. Normally what we learn is myocardial infarction means ST elevation. If you are seeing ST elevation, you think about myocardial infarction. But a patient never had myocardial infarction or uh, anything like that. Suddenly he is coming with LBVB with chest pain. You have to think that this patient might have developed LBVB. There is a criteria for that uh, that is called as Skarbosa criteria. ST elevation more than 1 millimeter in leads with positive QRS complex that is concordance that we have already discussed that is the most important finding that is got a score of 5. ST depression more than 1 millimeter in V1, V3, that is concordance in ST uh, deviation score 3. ST elevation more than 5 millimeter in leads with negative QRS complex, inappropriate discordance in ST deviation score 2. So, it is, uh, it is not uh, like a very specific, uh, but uh, that is uh, uh, you can get an idea whether uh, the patient is going for myocardial infarction or not. The specificity is uh, uh, 90 percent if the score is more than 3. But look at the first criteria, if you are seeing a concordance in ST segment that itself will make you a diagnosis, give you a diagnosis of uh, acute myocardial infarction. That is why that is the most important criteria in this uh, 3 criteria. LB with acute MI, you can uh, <coughs> already hear since this concordance, so very high value for this. Uh, the score is around uh, 5. ST segment depression more than 1 millimeter <coughs> in discordance. So, here ST segment depression is there more than 1 millimeter that is more than 1 small spice. So, that itself gives more than 3 value, uh, scores. ST segment elevation that is a discordance is more than 0.5. The discordance is there, but it is very uh, unusual discordance. Then that also gives a good value for your criteria. So, LB with the acute MI, these are the changes we have already seen that, but the most important finding will be a concordance. If you are seeing any ECG like this LBVB, you expect a change like this. But if you are seeing like this and if you are getting ST segment upwards, then think about myocardial infarction. If it is very high also myocardial infarction, if this ST segment is uh, very deep also myocardial infarction. So, whatever it is, if you are having an LBVB, always check the cardiac enzymes. If cardiac enzymes are highly elevated, then that is a feature of myocardial infarction. That is a only uh, investigation, blood investigation which will tell you that whether the patient is having uh, unstable angina or myocardial infarction. If cardiac enzymes are not elevated, then most of the things are due only due to ischemia. If the cardiac enzymes are elevated, then it is infarction. So, that has got a very important value there. So, LBV with the myocardial infarction, we are already told. Wide QRS complex, M pattern here, ST is elevated, concordance. 
Okay, so that is pi parallel infraction. <coughs> there are a few signs. Uh, I'm uh, going to tell about some of the signs which may be useful for you. If there is a notch in the first wave of the upslope of the, if there is a notch in the upslope of S wave, then there is a possibility of myocardial infarction. So around 27 percent, this finding can have uh, 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 sensitivity. You can see here there is a notch in the upslope. So that is classical sign seen in myocardial infarction, but the sensitivity is not very important, very uh, uh, useful. It is only 27 percent. This is called as Cabrera's sign. You can remember, you should remember all these things. For a postgraduate, these things are very important. Chapman sign, again another notch that has got a high specificity, sen or, sorry, high sensitivity around 90 percent, but the uh, notch is somewhere up 0 0.05 seconds, that means 50 milliseconds. If you have a change like this notch, then that is significant. Okay. So that can also tell you sometimes this patient is having myocardial infarction. LB with acute MI, we have already discussed this, I am not going to the details. But remember, if you are having a concordance in ST depression, a, a concordance, then that is concordance ST deviation. That is a classical finding that has got a high score value. <coughs> now, Another important uh, bundle branch block is right bundle branch block. It is not pathological like uh, your LBBB, but there are some conditions like pulmonary embolism. Pulmonary embolism is one condition patient can develop, up, develop acute right bundle branch block. So right ventricular hypertrophy, core pulmonary, pulmonary embolism, ischemic heart disease, rheumatic heart disease, congenital heart diseases like AST myocarditis, cardiomyopathies, uh, degenerative uh, heart disease, all these things can produce RBV. The typical pattern of RBV, if you see in V1, you get a RSR dash pattern. This is RSR dash pattern. Okay. So, RSR dash pattern. So, RSR dash pattern is a Typical finding in V1, you will get in RBVV. So, right bundle is actually defective here. Now, you can see here there is R, there is R, S, R dash pattern. So, R, S, R dash pattern. So, that is a typical feature of RBVV. So, RBVV is not pathological most of the time. Very rarely patient who is having pulmonary embolism can also present with RBV, but the patient will be severely symptomatic. A patient who is having acute breathlessness, ECG shows RBV, then the diagnosis may be <coughs> uh, pulmonary embolism, but COPD with core pulmonary also can have same change. Normal person also can have RBV, that is a problem. RBV is not, uh, many a times it is not a pathological finding. It is only a physiological finding. So, no need to worry about that. Only clinical features you have to follow. So, we have discussed about two important bundle branch blocks. One is right bundle branch block. That is most of the time it is physiological. It is benign. No need to investigate. No need to follow up. But whereas LBV is always pathological, always indicating ischemic heart disease, a concordance in the ST segment will tell you always that is uh, myocardial infarction. There are two types of uh, 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 LBV you have already seen. One is positive QRS complex that is M pattern following that you get ST depression TO inversion. Other one rarely you can get a W pattern, QRS is negative, ST segment elevation, upright T waves. If both are in same direction, QRS is positive, ST segment is positive, then it is called as concordance mostly that indicates acute myocardial infarction. Thank you.